Apophis, a near-Earth object, made headlines when it was first discovered in 2004 at Arizona's Kitt Peak National Observatory. At that time, it was a staggering 105 million miles away. What made Apophis stand out wasn't just its size, but the potential danger it posed. Early calculations of its orbit revealed that this asteroid could collide with Earth. In fact, there was a 2.7% chance of impact during its close approach in 2029, a number that placed it at the highest level on the Torino scale, which measures the risk of space objects. This triggered a wave of concern, both in the scientific community and across the media. rock up there mm -hmm. next yeah I see that well that actually came whizzing past between the moon and the earth about five years ago mm -hmm. it's going to come back again in 20 in 20 uh, 2029 yeah 2029 and then it will come back and just between the earth and moon and it will come back the next time in 2036. So the and orbit actually, is decaying. It will collide someplace between Siberia and Africa. And oh, it no. will be a huge Man. impact. Yeah. Many, many, many megatons. Bigger We're, than Tunguska? Don't know. How right big now. is that thing? It depends on its velocity. But it's there. We know it. We're tracking it. Oh, my and I And I said, and number six, veer its, veer its orbit. This place is the center of the world. The ancient Greeks called it the Omphalos, which means the navel of the earth. According to the legend, Zeus, the father of the gods, wanted to find the center of the universe. So he sent two eagles flying from the opposite ends of the universe, and the place where they met was Delphi. And the exact point where they met was marked with this stone, Omphalos, the navel. The god Apollo sought to establish his sanctuary, and when he discovered Delphi, the site was guarded by Python, a serpent or dragon-like creature. Apollo killed Python and assumed control of the sanctuary. Delphi flourished between the 6th and the 4th centuries BC, and it was not part of any Greek city-state, but it was a sacred place where anybody could come from all over the Greek world, extending upon the Mediterranean from southern Italy to Asia Minor and all the pilgrims who came here had the purpose of seeking guidance from the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle, a priestess of Apollo known as Pythia, was believed to possess the ability to communicate with the god and provide prophetic advice. thing is the cell tower. This is what started me all off on this and I needed to get the location and height and all that information for the cell tower 
in order to be able to tell if it could be seen or not from the crime scene. So that, that's what this is here. This is taken from the FCC. Let me show you that. See, I can place this image anywhere I want on the grid, just like Google did with the satellite image that we're looking at. But it's not accurate. So here's the, here's the document. This is where I got my information from. I ain't making this shit up. So we got a highly accurate crime scene location and a high, highly accurate cell tower location. This, this location also, just like the crime scene, the, uh, the numbers are rounded to the nearest tenth. So I've ended up with a, an exact same size squares over there at the cell tower as I did at the crime scene. Uh, but see, this is where I needed the height. They give you the height of the structure and then they give you the height with the the, the hardware that's attached to the top of the structure. So this is nice and accurate. Exactly what I needed. And that's how I was able to not only locate where the tower is, but also draw it at an accurate height. So here's the image location of the tower. Not accurate. The tower's over here. On the grid, the image location's here. Uh, you know, 43, 44 feet off. Not that big a deal, but under my circumstances, I want to know where it is. I, I can't guess. You know, you go by the imagery and you're guessing. So, here at the cell tower, I'm going to draw a line and go over to the crime scene. And this is where the 213 numbers come into play. This spot right there. It's bearing. I call it bearing. They call it heading. It's bearing 213.33. But what's... A, <laughs> It just makes it even more mind-blowing is that the same line to this spot there has another 213. It's 2,133 feet. I mean, you can't make this shit up. How can that be? 213 feet, 213 bearing and heading. Unreal. What, what, what that suggests to me is that this location is uh, <laughs> probably premeditated. I mean, especially when you consider it also that the crime scene is not in line of sight of the tower.
pretty high up here. Real high up here. There's no way down there. Yep, he's down there. You see the river? We're on the way to where the girls were found. Side. Yep. Side. Police deployed along the cemetery and Deer Creek where two bodies were found just out of the water. Investigators working to find if they're the remains of two 13-year-old friends who disappeared Monday afternoon. Found, uh, two bodies, um, is that the Sugar Creek? Deer Creek. Deer Creek, sorry. In Deer Creek, uh, about a mile east of town. Um, we are investigating this as, as a uh, crime scene. Uh, we suspect foul play. We're on the edge of the water, from what I understand. That's about the best I can tell. That is total new news to me. My my understanding, and I don't know where I heard it from, but my understanding was is that they were actually in the water i heard i mean again i don't even know where i heard it some site probably uh that one of the girls was still alive when they found them and i heard that that they were holding on to a tree limb, limbs in the water i mean also they're not saying anything tonight about how those individuals uh died how that were found along that river bank we may know more on that tomorrow as well uh Keep in mind that there uh, the likeliness, the possibility of, of more than one person. Uh, we're, we're not saying that the person, that the voice that you heard is the same as this person here. This is all very complicated, very involved. We have a completed puzzle right now. And it's an aerial view of what happened to those two little girls. Yeah. The only thing we're missing is who. What we have publicly addressed is, is people want to make the assumption that the voice saying down the hill it belongs to the person that's captured in the image uh, from the cell phone. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, we're not making any assumption about right. that. Uh, we have more video. Uh, we have more audio. Uh, but it is specific to the investigation, and that's why it's not being released at this Press time. Press conference, you said the killer could be in this room. Yes. Do you believe that your investigators have interviewed this person i'm not going to go there i don't think it'd be a proper for, it'd be proper for me to do that but i do think that the killer would be watching this interview what do you want to say to him uh, what the family says today could be the day sleep well today could be the day maybe it's tomorrow. Uh, son, son's the odin and the odinism what this group is trying to portray and represent when they say Sons of Odin, it's actually an outlaw MC uh, motorcycle club. They're trying to represent that, oh, we are the Sons of Odin. They're not. They're false representing and trying to act like something they aren't. I'm just flabbergasted. Some of you just now looking, you haven't looked at. Amber and Brad Holders, Tears, Hellhounds of Indiana, Norse Pagan, Kindred. The Delphi case is rife with deception, and the public has been undeniably misled by both law enforcement and those closest to the case. To start, this image is not real, nor is it the last photograph of Abigail, just moments before the killer approached. It first appeared on Facebook, not through law enforcement. It is an edited combination of this authentic photograph of Abby playing softball in a hotel parking lot and the bridge guy image itself, which is a template of sorts. You can go to the channel Eye of Apophis and watch the series Shadow Man to see this proven as fact. These two pieces of evidence were planted on Libby's phone by the perpetrators. This would have been obvious to the FBI immediately and that's why the case has been handled with so much secrecy, because of deception. Two years later, after having Disney and NASA work with them, 
law enforcement disseminated this video of the bridge guy. So on one hand, we, we say to the media, thank you. And I really do mean that to keeping for keeping this front and center, not just nationally, but even globally. But then the other side is when you have questions, we can't answer them. So I, I understand that frustration. I really, truly do. And I know you can't answer every question that we have here, but we're going to fire away anyway. Is the guy in custody, Richard Allen, is he the only person being looked at in this investigation? Uh, right now, he's the one. He's the one that's been that that has that's now facing murder charges. So, again, we are not going to stop looking at other people until this is completely done, and we have nothing left to do. So, seventy thousand plus tips, hundreds have come in since two weeks ago. Um, week ago Monday, I guess, and we'll continue to receive those tips and look into them as you would expect. If this affidavit is released and there's a hearing coming up, I believe on the 22nd, that's got some information that led to the arrest of Richard Allen, the suspect. If that is allowed to be given to the public, is that going to compromise the investigation in any way? No, I don't think at this point it will. And I think it'll answer a lot of the questions hmm. uh, that, that, that people have. And um, will we find out how we got to this point with that will. information? Yeah, it'll be much clearer. I read about, you know, it, it's instead of a gangbang, it was actually these people, um, this club, and they were recruiting members, guys, uh, this way. This is how they're getting, you know, people to get a hold of them. And they were having them take these girls, um, all ages, not escorts not that it would matter we were all the same but i'm saying like these some of these girls were you know young and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they thought they were going to go meet this girl and you know they would they would take these girls very violently and um they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it and then they would tie them up and they would hold them until this club came in the middle of the night to pick up you know it's toys and take them wherever to the clubhouse and um, sell them or, or do other terrible things to them. And um, so I, I said, look, I was like, I told my friend, I was like, you are going to tell this man that you found a girl and you're going to tie me up and he can come over. And when he gets here, we're going to tie him up and I'm going to see what, See what he has to say, I guess. And he agreed. Nobody cares about documentation. You're a pussy. You're not going to do shit. So keep my name out of your mouth, Prof, because I'm telling you, dude, you're pissing me the fuck off. I've got better things to do than to worry about what some little pussy...
go out and we see Geocache. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. We used to do that. That's actually what we were doing the weekend. Everything happened. Like, that week we had went. We had spent those two weekends, the one before and the one, like, right before. We went geocaching in, like, both times. And we Was just there... go out on the trails around here and find them. Was there a geocache um, that... Is it, how do I say, Monon? Monon. Mo, Monon? Hybrid. Yeah, Monon. And we just call it hybrid. Monon hybrid. hybrid. Mm -hmm. Was there a geocache there? There are two of them, but she, we promised that we would only do it together, so I know she wasn't looking for one. But yeah. it's at the beginning of the bridge, right underneath the railroad tie at the beginning, so we didn't have to cross it to find it. And the other one is on the side of the road, like as you drive there, mm -hmm. there's one in the woods right there. Oh. Okay. Isn't that a shirt?
No, I, okay. So let's go this way. Yeah. Bottle. Oh, this is this this is an alcohol bottle. Yeah, you see all the evidence. Yeah, this is the the party's party place right here there's the cave what did it say there's a yeah look at all the stuff here this is the cave there it is is this the cave did you guys used to call this the cave huh Keep your eye open for syringes, though. Here we are. This is the cage. Go to the other side, too. One more time, just capture a different angle of this stone culvert, right? Is that what we called it? That's the side we went in, and here's the other side. That's it. But it really does look like some action could have taken place. Yeah. And this is 300 Northwest. 300 Northwest? Yeah. Oh, or sure? North 300 West, that's what it's called. North 300 West. I don't want to see my truck down there. Yeah, I don't want to get your truck. <laughs> well, I mean, if I do get it, I would just cut it out, right? Never, but um, <laughs> I noticed that, uh, you know, you seem to know a lot of the people in um, Delphi, Flora. What brought you to Flora? Question number one. There we go. Um, and um, you mentioned uh, that you were, like, in Flora at that time. Um, and I also know that you seem to know um, uh, Jennifer Barnes. How? Mm -hmm. What's um, I was in jail with her, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Jennifer Wait, Barnes was mail. arrested for... Do what? You're a male inmate. She's a female inmate. Yeah, well, in Carroll County, the uh, jail is so small, it only holds 35 people. And literally, the girls are on a wall about this far away from me. So you can actually look oh. through the hole and see them and pass notes to them and stuff like that. So when you're in jail, you can hear each other talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so basically, they're right next door to us. People would write letters back and forth and send it through the holes. And people would communicate back and forth like that. And you just get a pen pal. Well, mm -hmm. that's that's how I ended up meeting her. I met her okay. there. And that's. And uh, she filmed your uh, uh, Delphi ago. walk across um, uh, Delphi walk. Across the um, no, she, no, she wasn't at any of those things for Delphi, except for one video back in 2018 in the fall or something like that. Me and a group of people just happened to go out there and she happened to be one of them. Yeah. All right. I mean, like, um, it's just interesting. Have you like stayed up with her? Like, have you been in contact with her since? Um, well, she's in jail. Uh, she's uh, actually convicted of murder. So, yeah, yep, she's a convicted yep. murderer. And your friendship <laughs> like piqued my interest.
And everything and all, and all of it. We're looking at all of it. We said when this happened, we were going to start all over. So you never, doing. so you never cleared him, Mr. Logan. We haven't cleared anybody. June, July, and then that's when shit hit the fan. Now, a lot of podcasters, they don't have necessarily a Discord, but I asked a pretty well-known individual, how, do you, how, do you, how it was that he saw these images? Well, he said to me, they were just thrown onto Discord. <laughs> 